For the Lord is good. For his mercy endures forever. For the Lord is good. He's good and he's only good. You know, uh, a word that Brother Marty shared when he was here uh, not long ago, right? Not long ago, but he shared a word of the Lord that came through uh, uh, Brother Rick Renner for 2023. And I, w I, I want to refer to this. I feel like I'm, do I sound okay? Yeah. <laughs> I was told earlier my voice really carries, so I'm a, I'm a little nervous here. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, just a word of the Lord. He actually shared another one, and I, and I want to read it as well. But, you know, sometimes when we hear things um, that there, a word of the Lord came through a minister, uh, you know, and we think, oh, yeah, you know, whatever. You know, we really don't want to have that heart. Um, but it needs to bear witness with our spirit, right? And uh, it needs to be based on the word of God. So we don't want we don't want to shun prophecies, right? And there are there are some that I have heard that excites me. It it excites me a lot. Why does it excite me? Uh, number one, because it bears witness. Number two, I know the scripture that I am standing on and believing God for. Uh, fulfillment in our lives and it completely lines up with it amen amen uh, and so anyway one of the things that uh, brother Rick said he said that 2023 would be a year of divine divine surprises divine provision divine revelation for those who will receive it and so I think this is sometimes why people get turned off, especially by a gospel that's good news, because that is not what they are experiencing. But everything God gives us, he gives us by his grace, but we have to lay hold of it by our faith. Amen. Amen. And so the, the part of this about divine revelation, I believe this. Uh, divine revelation for those who will receive it this year. And I believe that in this house, uh, we pray for this, we declare this, we are believing God for it, that there is divine revelation in the knowledge of who he is uh, flowing in, in this house, in your life, and in the lives of our families like never before. Amen. Amen. Divine revelation. Thank you, Father, for it. Thank you for divine revelation because, uh, you know, when we're in darkness, what do we need? Light. When we're believing a lie, what do we need? Truth. And the Holy Spirit takes the Word of God and plants it right on the inside of our hearts so that what was once dark in our lives, once where things were, were lacking and was not present with the life of God, now life has come. Amen. So, uh, so I'm pretty excited about that word, and I am. I'm believing for divine provision, uh, divine surprises. I've already had one divine surprise this year. Amen. Glory to God. And uh, I believe it's just the beginning. Yes. Why? Because God is good. Because God is good, and his mercy endures forever. How many of y'all read the devotional this week? Yeah, check it out uh, if, you, uh, if you haven't. And, uh, and it talks about God's goodness, and it talks about his mercy that endures forever, his tenderness, his compassion, his forgiveness, his uh, propensity, if that, if that is the right word, to do good, to do good to you, for you. Amen. For the Lord is good. He's good to me. Say, he's good to me. You know, we need to make these declarations. This is one of the things about the word being in our, in our mouth in just a nanosecond. Is that a thing? Yes. Hey, how about that? In just an, I don't know what it means. In just a nanosecond, 
If we will just declare what God says, no kidding, it takes us from being down, from being depressed, from not knowing how we're going to make it by just declaring his word, light and faith and hope and expectancy comes into our heart. Amen? Amen. So in this house, in this house, man, this has been said for months and months and months and months. Um, in this house, God's word is final authority in our lives. And um, there's a lot to that one little statement. But I believe we have come light years from where we were, I would say, even the beginning from the beginning of last year. I do. Uh, uh, a, a place of honor and a place of truly understanding what it means to allow the Word of God, to submit to the Word of God, and have it be final authority in our lives. You know, I've heard this, um, I've heard people say before, and I get it, I understand, uh, you know, where they're coming from, but I've heard people say, I don't care. I don't care where my kids go to church. I just, I don't care, just so they go to church somewhere. You ever heard that? No. You know, and what that says to me is that that is showing absolute disregard and no value, number one, to God's word, and number one, to his lordship. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you go to church. Just go to church. Well, uh, that's, not what, that's not what we're taught in the Bible. It does matter where we go to church. Yes. Number one, it's obedience to Christ. But number two, we want to be in a church that teaches and preaches God's word. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because if we just take the attitude of, I don't care, just go to church. I mean, it's just like... You know, you think back into Jesus' days and he called the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious sect of his day, he called them whitewashed sepulchers. What does that mean? You're, you know, they, they paint you white on the outside, but in the, in the, on the inside you stinketh. You are dead. You are dead, right? Uh, and so we, we don't want to be that people with that kind of attitude of just saying it doesn't matter where you go to church. Just so you go into a building somewhere, but we're not like that, right? It does matter. And we submit to the Lordship of Jesus, and he brings us into a place. I'm so thankful that when our heart is turned towards him, that he leads us and he directs us in a place where he can get more of himself to us. Amen. Even when we don't know much you know, thank God we don't have to know everything for him to lead us. We just have, a, have to have a heart for him to lead us. Amen? It has nothing to do with the message. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and we're going we're gonna to get into, into the message uh, tonight. But um, the title of the message is Identity. Identity, and I hope that uh, you have your Bibles. I hope that you have your Bibles. I hope that you're taking notes. I love, I just, I love how Pastor talks about his Bible. I love the way he talks about the Word. This is God's Word. This is God's Word. It's not just a self help book, right? This is God's Word. And God's word is alive to us. Amen. Amen. So the word of God being final authority in our lives. What, what does that look like? Uh, and there's different facets. I want you to turn to 2 Timothy 3.16. Different facets of, of the word of God being final authority uh, in our lives. We're going to put it up in the... Uh, ESV version. I'm going to read it out of uh, the Berean Study Bible version. It says, all scripture is God-breathed. Say, God-breathed. God <laughs> and is useful for instruction, for conviction, for correction, and for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be complete, fully equipped for every 
good work. So the man of God can be complete. Does that sound good to you? Yes. Complete. Wholeness. Right? Spirit, soul, and body. Complete. Nothing lacking. Nothing missing. And, and we just read right there that it's God's word and it's his, uh, the scripture that is alive, that is God-breathed, uh, that does that for us in our lives. Amen? All right. In the message translation, I want to read it. It says, there's nothing like the written word of God for showing you the way to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Every part of scripture is God-breathed and useful one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. Through the word, we are put together and shaped up for the task God has for us. And that's just good. Amen. So, instruction. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for instruction or for teaching. Uh, it's, our, it's our life manual, isn't it? Yeah. Have, you, have you ever heard anyone say, uh, when they become new parents, they'll say, you know what, I just don't know what I'm doing. Babies or children, they don't come with a manual. If they just came with a manual, have you ever heard that? Yeah. You know, but the truth is they do come with a manual. God's word is our manual. Amen? Amen. Amen. For teaching, for instructing. Uh, it's profitable for conviction. Conviction, a firmly held belief. Conviction is a firmly held belief. And uh, obviously, if we're Christians, if we're Christ followers, then we uh, should be establishing our belief system through his word. Is that right? If we're Christians and if we're following Christ, then we need to establish our belief system through his word. Yes. Not through tradition of men, not through Nana, not through Pop Pops, uh, not it, only through God's word. Amen? God's word is profitable for correction. Aren't you thankful? I love Miss Janice. Man, I love hanging out with her. She said, oh, I just love it when God corrects me. I just love his correction. And, and her attitude is right. We should love correction. How many times has Pastor said, you know, if you're getting ready to go off a cliff, aren't you thankful for someone that says, not that way? Yeah. Amen? Amen? And that's what God does. That's what his word does. He brings correction. I've said this many, 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 many times. If I've come to two or three services where I have not sensed correction uh, from sitting under the word, then that's a red flag in my life. Yeah. Number one, that my heart is hardened somewhere. That something needs to change, that there needs to be repentance, because every single time that we sit under the word, he is always bringing us a word that brings uh, correction and adjustments in our lives. Yeah. Always. Always. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and, and we, and you know, God's word being final authority in our life, we have to look at it. Uh, this way, God is right. God is right. God's ways are right. Period. And I make adjustments in my life according to his word. I don't debate with him. I don't try to, to reason it out and try to get his word to line up with a lifestyle or an attitude uh, that I am determined to hang on to. I have to determine in my heart, God is right. God is right. And I am the one that makes the adjustments and come up under his word. Amen. Amen. So, Scripture is also profitable for training in righteousness. And that's what I want to talk about. Uh, I want to talk about tonight. Training in righteousness. Now, I feel confident there's multiple ways that this uh, could be looked at. But the way that uh, we're going to look at it tonight 
is training in righteousness for who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. This is, listen, making the word final authority in our lives is as important as who the Bible says we are as it is important to do and not do what the Bible instructs us to do and not do. That was a mouthful, but are you following it? Yeah, uh, it's, it's vitally important that we get our identity and who we are as a, a son of God, as a daughter of God through his word. And no matter what we feel like and no matter what has been said to us throughout the years, no matter what has happened, if God says that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, because I've called on him as my Lord and Savior, then as a final authority, I have to agree with that word. Right. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Y'all yes. 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 stay with me. Stay with me here, okay? Um, we don't have to make ourselves righteous. I know. I know, this gets said a lot, and it's kind of a no-brainer, but how many of you spend your days of trying to earn uh, right standing with God? That you spend more time thinking about what you do and you don't do rather than worshiping Him for what He's done in you and made you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we don't make ourselves righteous. We don't earn it, right? Right? But he gave us a, a righteous identity. We could say it like this, that uh, we were born into it. We were born righteous when we were born again. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, second, uh, I don't think I wrote this down. Hang, hang on a minute. Actually, I did, and it's in my notes back here so just just hang on um let's turn to ephesians 1 please ephesians chapter 1 oh my goodness the book of ephesians such a such a wonderful wonderful book you know the epistles do, do y'all you know what i mean by the epistles the letters that paul wrote to the church right and it was God who gave Paul the revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus. Do you know that we don't get that revelation in the Gospels? We don't. Uh, we get the revelation. Jesus came to reveal the Father to us, right? Uh, he came to establish uh, the kingdom laws, right? He came to reveal to mankind uh, their their sin sick nature and their need for a savior, yes. right? But not in the gospels do we find this revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus, and so that's why uh, that's why Romans, uh, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Timothy. That's why it's so very important that I'm so excited uh, about reading the New Testament uh, this year, but it is through these letters that we learn what actually transpired when Jesus went to the cross, when he was buried, and when he was resurrected. How many of you know he didn't do that by himself? <laughs> he took us with him. We were crucified with Christ. We were buried with Christ, and we were raised with Christ. Glory to God. So it's in these books that we begin, uh, we begin to see who we are in him. And apart from God's word and apart from the Holy Spirit revealing who God made us to be, we will live the very same life that we lived before we were born again. It's true. It's true. All right, Ephesians 1 and we're going to start in, uh, in verse 3. And I actually want to read uh, uh, several scriptures here. But we're, oh, boy. But we're going to start in, in verse 3. And, you know, when you go through, I encourage you to do this if you haven't already. But if you have, just continue to do it. But in these books of the Bible where it says, in Christ, in him, by him, through him. 
It's talking about your identity. It's talking about who you are in Christ. It's talking about what you have in Christ. It's talking about what you can do in Christ. Amen. So it, it, it would be good to go through uh, when we're reading, when, when, when we come to these books in the Bible, in our daily uh, Bible reading, that we highlight that we highlight those phrases in Christ, in Him, through Him, by Him, because it illuminates who we really are. Amen. All right, Ephesians 1 and 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Where? In Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I want to read this out of uh, the Norley translation. It says, Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing that heaven itself enjoys. In Christ. Hallelujah. Say, it's talking about me. Hallelujah. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing that heaven itself enjoys. How many of you know that heaven enjoys love, peace, joy, healing and wholeness, health? Amen prosperity, no lack, super abundance, amen? And this scripture just tells us that blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has already blessed us with everything that heaven itself enjoys. Amen. Let's keep reading. I want to Actually, if you'll just bear with me, I want to read a, a few more verses um, from the Norley translation here of, of this chapter. Ephesians 1, okay. Um, verse 4. For even before the world was made, he chose us in him to be holy and blameless before him in love. Even before the world was made, he chose you in him. By his good plan and purpose, he predestined us to become his sons by adoption through Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. By his good plan and purpose, he predestined us to become his sons by adoption through Jesus Christ. Let's talk about adoption for just a second. How many of you realize that when you're adopted into a new family, you're coming under a new set of rules, a new way of living, right? When you've been adopted into a new family, there's, there's different guidelines. There's a different provision that's in that family than what you came out of. Is that right? I remember uh, I've been to two adoption ceremonies uh, with our two granddaughters, and I hope I don't butcher this, uh, uh, but I remember them calling Landon to the stand, and under oath, he was asked questions, uh, is, it, is it your intent to adopt? Yes, yes it is. Do you take the full responsibility for her provision, for her well-being, for her financial support, right? Some, yeah, and so he's on the stand, he's under oath, and he's saying, yes, 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 yes. What a picture, what a picture of it always being God's intent to adopt us into his family. So in his family, there's a new law. There's a new way of doing things. Just like all of Landon's provision is made available for his daughters now, all of God's provision in the family that we've been adopted into is our provision. God says, yes, I've adopted you into my family. 
all of my provision is your provision. I've made, I have made ready a supply of everything you will ever need in your life. And I did it before you ever even hit planet earth. So there's not a need that arises in your life that God himself hasn't already prepared for and made ready for you. And you say, well, if that is true, then why does it seem that I have needs in my life? Because the Bible instructs us that we must lay hold of eternal life by faith. Amen. And if we are unaware of who we are in Christ, of what we have in Christ, then we are not going to be laying hold of anything by faith. We're just going to be taking life as it comes to us. Is that right? But we've been adopted into God's family. And I'm so thankful that in his family, we were once, we were once in the kingdom of darkness. We were once in a different family. Once, Satan himself was our father, but God, amen, delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, from, from the family that I was once in, that you were once in, where death and darkness and sin reigned, now we're in a family, and when we, we are in a kingdom where the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus rules and reigns. Hallelujah. That's Romans 8, uh, 2, I believe, that scripture there. Thank you, Lord. We've been adopted into a new family, new rules, and a new identity. And so, verse 6, we praise his glorious mercy by which he has made us the objects of his favor through his beloved son. Okay, right here, we're talking identity right here. Don't just read over that. Did you hear? You hear through his beloved son. This is who we are in Christ Jesus. And it tells us that God has made us the objects of his favor through his beloved son. What if we walked around in life with this mentality? With acknowledging this is who we are. I am the object of God's favor. My family is the object of God's favor in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. Um, verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Oh, don't hate me. Uh, verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him, verse 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Wow, I thought we would get a little... You have an inheritance. In Christ, you have obtained an inheritance. Amen. Amen. An inheritance. I have an inheritance in Christ Jesus. Uh, so, we talked about this a while ago. In Christ, we are righteous. Amen. Amen. In Christ, we are healed. We're going, to talk, we're going to talk quite a bit about this. In Christ, we are prosperous. This is who we are. This is, this is who we are in Christ Jesus. All right? Uh, righteous, 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. So when was, uh, when was our righteousness purchased? So it was purchased 2,000 years ago when Jesus took upon himself our sins. Is that right? It was purposed and made available to us 2,000 years ago. 
We step into it when we're born again. We step into it at the new birth. Amen. Amen. So uh, now righteousness uh, or righteous is who we are. Right standing with God. Uh, do, do you guys, you know, we, we can walk around in life and, and really we feel pretty good about ourselves when we're doing good. Is that right? But do we still feel righteous and do we still call ourselves righteous when we're not doing so good? Well done. Well done. Absolutely. Yeah, the right answer is we should, but in reality, do we? Because if I'm going to make the Word of God final authority in my life, no matter what is going on in my life and how I feel and how I've blown it and how I've missed it, I have to come under the truth and the authority of God's words that says, In Christ, I am the righteousness of God in Him. And if I will concentrate and give my attention to my identity and, and, and who I am in Him, then there's a lot of behavioral things that's going to straighten itself out. Because I'm not trying to do good on the outside. I'm drawing from who God made me on the inside. Amen. Amen. So we are healed. We are the healed of the Lord. 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Ye were healed. Uh, let's go to Isaiah. I want to read this uh, there in Isaiah 54, please. Isaiah 54, in verse 4, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, our weaknesses, and distresses. Born means, born means to lift up to, uh, and to bear away. He bore them. He, he took them, he lifted them off of us, and he carried them away. Surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment, Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted uh, by God. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain pay, uh, peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Now, we know that the prophet Isaiah here is prophesying into the future when the Lord Jesus will lay down his life, will he, when he will take upon himself our sins. Amen. And when he will allow the stripes, the punishment, the beating uh, upon his flesh. And the Bible tells us that it's by those stripes, it's by those wounds that we were, we're looking back at the cross, right? Isaiah was looking to the cross. We're looking back at the cross. It, it, it's a finished work. By his stripes, we were healed. Amen. Amen. So when did, when did Jesus uh, pay for, when did he pay for our healing? 2,000 years ago at the cross, right? And we move in to health and healing when we are born again. So my spirit and your spirit, it's alive unto God. It's alive unto God. He made you righteous and he made you healed. Okay. So we are the healed of our Lord, the healed of the Lord. It's who we are. 
It is part of our redemption package. And just stay with me. I'm praying for utterance here that I can communicate this uh, because this truth will change the way we fight our battles. Because so many times as Christians, we are trying to, we're, we're asking God for things and we're trying to be in faith for things that are out here. We're asking, we're believing for healing. Are you following me? We're, we're asking God to heal us. We're believing God to heal us like healing is out here in something that we are trying to get. But he made us healed. He made us that way. We're not trying to get it. We were born that way. We were born again into health, healing, and wholeness. So just like I don't, try, I don't have to try to be a female, I was born that way. Come on. I don't have to try to get healing. I was born that way. But if I don't know that, then I'm going to spend my life trying to get something that God has made me to be. Hang, just hang on with me, okay? So, so the enemy works so hard at separating us from our identity. Right? He works to separate us from who we are in Christ Jesus. He wants to keep our identity a secret so that we're always trying to get something that we already have or we trying to become something that we already are. That's why the scripture and the word of God is so important because it tells us who we are. Yeah. Yeah. It tells us. Hello. <laughs> it tells us what we have in Christ Jesus. Uh, I heard a minister tell this story about a preacher talking to a Jewish man and this preacher asked the Jewish man, he said, how did you become so wealthy? The Jewish man said, I don't understand your question. He said, how, how, did, you, uh, how did you get your wealth? How did you become wealthy? He said, I don't understand your question. And, and the preacher tried to ask him the, question, the same question again. And, and he said, I'm a Jew. In, in the covenant for a practice and a believing Jew and the covenant they have with Almighty God, uh, you can't separate uh, their identity uh, from wealth. If I'm a Jew, I'm wealthy. That's what the covenant says. I mean, and he, he looked at him like, I don't understand your question. I'm a Jew. And so, uh, so yeah, the preacher was trying to... to uh, separate who he was, right? He, he was trying to separate his identity. And the enemy does that. He, he does that with us all of the time. Are you following me? Yes. <laughs> uh, all right. So, prosperous in Christ, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. Where did Jesus become poor? At the cross. Why did he become poor? Because he took our poverty. You, you remember, all of my sin, all of our sin, all of our sickness and disease, all of our lack and all of our poverty passed from us to Calvary. And all of God's righteousness and God, all of God's healing and health and wholeness and all of his prosperity passed from Calvary unto us. Glory to God. The great exchange. <clears throat> the great exchange. Hallelujah. And, and so Jesus paid for our deliverance from poverty, and he paid for our identity, who we are in him. He paid for that prosperity. When? At the cross. And we move into it. How? By faith. By, uh, that's right. By faith at the new birth. We move into it at the new birth. Now listen, just 
because God has made us these things, we have to access it daily by faith. Uh, access it. That may not be the right word. We activate it. We activate it every day by faith. Amen. All right. So righteousness, health, healing, prosperity is who we are. Say, I was born that way. We don't become that by reading the Bible. We don't become that by confessing or going to church. We don't, we don't become that by earning it. We were born that way. Amen. We were born into it. We were born into it. Amen. But we activate it by faith. So the truth is we can live our entire life with forgiveness of our sins, with health, healing, and wholeness on the inside of us in our born-again spirit man. We can live with prosperity on the inside of us in our spirit man because he put that in us when we were born again. But we can leave this earth in poverty, in sickness, and with our, our sins unforgiven. Not as a born again child of God, you, the, the sin, your sins are forgiven. But we have to tap into it. We have to activate it by our faith daily. Amen. And I don't know if that looks any different to you uh, than, it, than uh, it, did, it did to me. But you know what? Me fighting and you fighting the good fight of faith looks a lot different. It looks a lot different um, when symptoms come, when lack comes. I fight a whole lot differently knowing that I am righteous, that I am the healed of the Lord, that I am prosperous. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith a lot different than if I think it's sitting over there somewhere and I'm trying to get it. <clears throat> Romans 8, 5 through 8, I want to read this in the ESV version. It says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. What does it mean? Uh, but those who live, um, for those who live according to the flesh, when we set our minds on the things of the flesh, what does that mean? That means we're living carnally. That means we're living according to our five senses, what we can taste, what we can see, what we hear, what we touch, uh, what we smell. That is what it means to live according to the flesh, right? But we're instructed to live and to set our minds on the things of the Spirit. Where is our righteousness? Where did he put it in us? He put it in our spirit man. That's what our spirit man is made up of. Where, where did he put health and healing? He put it in our spirit man. Where did he put prosperity? He put it in our spirit man. So if I'm going to live only according to what my natural senses uh, uh, takes notice of, <clears throat> then I'm not going to be living where forgiveness, where health and healing and wholeness, where prosperity is. Does that make sense? And so you may hear people say, all right, I've heard this, I've heard this. By his stripes, we were healed. By his stripes, we were healed. I've heard that. Well, why don't I feel healed then? Have you ever heard anyone say that or have you ever felt that way? Yeah. yeah. And the answer is because we're carnal. Okay. Because we're minding the things of the flesh instead of the things of the spirit. 
And the Bible tells us uh, that God's words are spirit and they are life. Right? So if I'm saying, okay, I understand by his stripes I was healed, but I don't feel healed. That means that I'm checking my body to see if I'm healed rather than checking the word of God and what he says about it is if I'm healed or not. Are you following me? So, so there are, there are things, uh, and, and this is the best way to put it. Yes, there are symptoms. Yes, there can be facts in our body. There can be uh, a fact that, uh, that there's pain in our body. Uh, absolutely. But facts change. We're talking about the Word of God being final authority in our lives. Facts are temporal. They are in the temporary realm and they change. So if I've made a determination, if you've made a determination that the word of God is final authority in your life, then you lay the truth of God's word on that fact that there's pain in your body and that fact has to give way to truth. And we fight the good fight of faith and we stay with it and we stay with it and we don't grow weary in well-doing. We, 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 uh, we lay hold of it and we don't let go. And, and this is where the enemy comes in and he's going to do his best to talk you out of it. It's going to be, it, it might take a while. It, it, it may not just happen just like this. And the same thing, the same thing with our prosperity. The very same thing. We take, you know... Uh, our, our bank account balances, uh, they change, right? From day to day, from week to week, uh, there, there's times in our lives when, uh, when the numbers in our bank account, they just change. That's right. And so it may be that there is lack, that we are looking at lack in the numbers. But what are we calling final authority in our lives? God's word. We lay the truth of God's word that we are prosperous in Christ Jesus. And because we are prosperous, then prosperity and provision and more than enough must come to us. Thank you, Lord. Making the word of God final authority in our lives when it comes to who we are in Christ Jesus. And I'm telling you, this is what is called fighting the good fight of faith. Amen. Fighting the good fight of faith. Hebrews 11, just a couple of more scriptures and I'll close. Hebrews 11, 1 and 2, in the King James it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Uh, how did the elders obtain a good report? Faith. How? Faith. By faith. How many times, I, I just cannot even begin to tell you the number of times that someone has said, I'm going to the doctor next week, please pray that I get a good report. Now, now think about that and what we have been talking about. Where do we get our good report? Where do we get our good report? When we say, pray for me that I will get a good report, what you are saying is, I will not believe that I am healed until the doctor tells me that I am healed. And so I'm looking to a report or I'm looking to my body. I'm looking to, uh, I'm looking to things in the natural realm to tell me if I'm healed or not instead of looking to my redemption and what God says about me. Amen. Amen. We don't want to be. Did y'all follow me there? We don't want to believe people. We don't want to believe people. That's not what I meant to say. We don't want to be people <laughs> um, that are not believing that we are healed. If the Bible says that by his stripes I was healed, 
then I am going to stay with the Word of God no matter what symptom shows up in my body, no matter what report a doctor tells me. The Word of God is final authority in my life. And His Word says that by His stripes I was healed. That God laid every sickness, every disease, and every pain upon the Lord Jesus. And he carried them away. Amen. So we don't check. We don't live carnally. We don't, we don't mind the things of the flesh and our five senses uh, to determine who we are and what we have in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 3.18, this is the last verse. It says, and all of us, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, we are constantly being transfigured into his very own image in ever-increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another. Hallelujah. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So as we continue, as we be, just continue to behold him uh, in the word, it says as in a, as in a mirror, as we just continue, as we continue to behold him. How many of you know he is the word? As we continue to behold him, as we continue to submit to the authority of, of his word. And, and it, it not only defines God to us, but, but he defines us to us. Amen. Amen. And we are being changed from glory to glory in his very own image. How many of you know our big brother, the Lord Jesus, and our father, that they are complete, that they are whole, that they are lacking nothing, amen, that they are righteous, that they are healthy and whole, that they are prosperous, that their lives are full of joy and peace and love. Amen. And we are, we are the Father's offspring. Made in his very likeness with his very own stuff and his very own substance. So he made us to be just like him. Just like him. And, and so it, the, this, the training the training, and you know, this can be a message that, you know, I pray the Holy Spirit ministered truth to you, and it can be a message that you think, golly, that is, that is really, really uh, good news. But if, if, if that's all that we do with it, if we don't continue to behold him in his word, if we don't continue to let him tell me who I am in him, then what I am going to do is I'm going to live my life according to the flesh. I'm just going to live my life according to the flesh and whatever happens, happens. Right? But glory to God, we are not those people. Hallelujah. A year of divine revelation. Revelation who, of, of, of who He is and who we are in Him. Amen. Amen. Pastor, do you? No? Oh. All right. Y'all can stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you that your word is truth. Oh, I thank you for your goodness and for your kindness. I thank you that in Christ Jesus, we are righteous. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, we are healthy. Our bodies are healthy and whole. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, we are a prosperous people. Glory to God. And so, and so I thank you, Father. I, I just thank you for, for revelation 
revelation knowledge flowing into into all of our lives that 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 you strengthen us lord that you that that you cause the truth of your word to rise up on the inside of us and uh father i thank you for victory i just i, I thank you for victory i thank you for the truth of your word hallelujah I just thank you for the truth of your word and that we would be a people and that we would be a church just as in, uh, in the book of Acts when it said, and mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So I declare it in this house and over this people, over every individual and every household and, and, and in this house that mightily grows the word of God and prevails in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just we bless you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for life, life, and more life. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, 